Today I will show you how to knit a cotton dishcloth by using a punch card. The dishcloth pattern may look familiar to you because this is the Afghan lovely punch card I used in my previous video. By having this punch card you can make dishcloths in seconds. First make sure the racking handle is in its lowest position. Raise 51 needles on the front bed, 26 to the left and 25 to the right of the center. Now place the edge springs on the last working needles and make sure the latches are closed. Raise the opposite 51 needles on the back bed of the machine. You can observe the needle roll, but since this is a tuck pattern, you may raise one additional needle to the left on the back bed. Now set both locks to N and the stitch size to 3. Insert the orange strippers and take the main yarn. For this project I will use one strand of 50 tex cotton yarn. It is a very thin thread-like yarn. I waxed the yarn when I was winding it into a cake. Finding the right tension is the hardest part when working with cotton yarn. For this yarn I need to set the tension on the mass to 1 which is the opposite thing that I would do with a thin strand of acrylic yarn. Keep in mind that this is only a suggestion, you have to make a test to find the right setting for the yarn you are using. Now knit one row. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size to 4. Now knit two rows. Set both locks to N and increase the stitch size to 5. Take a strand of contrasting color yarn and lay it over the stitches. Pull both ends of that yarn between the beds of the machine and tie them together. You can see how I am making the knot so it won't untie while I am knitting. After making the knot you have to attach a small weight to the loop. You can see the contrasting color yarn up close. Now knit one row to finish the cast on. Clear the row counter and set the front lock to AX. Now raise pushers and the row needles in working position on the front bed. Take the card reader and attach it to the center of the machine. Press the black lever and insert the card until you hear a click. Then press and hold the black lever and forward the card until you can see 64 in the left viewfinder and 28 in the right one. The sensing feelers of the card reader must be arranged for the first row of the border. Now you can connect the punch card in a loop. By the way, you can download the punch card from the link in the description. You can watch my video of how to make your own punch cards by using one free online punch card generator. Now you can see the card reader up close. Push the trip cam for the row counter to the left as far as it can go. Slide the deco device to the right, attach it to the front lock and set it to 4. Now need 223 rows. You have to stop with the lock on the left side of the machine. If you still haven't noticed, this is the first video that isn't sped up. That is the real speed I'm moving the lock. Since I'm using cotton yarn, I have to knit slowly and move the lock consistently in each direction. 
I'm moving the lock further away from the needles just so the yarn can have the time to be tensioned correctly in the mast. If you are moving the lock too fast or with inconsistent speed, you may jam the machine or break the yarn. Now I'm knitting the last few rows. I know that I'm ready when I can see that the sensing feelers are arranged for the first row of the pattern. You should see zero through the viewfinder. Now set the front lock to end, detach the deco device and set it to zero. Knit one row to the right. On both locks increase the stitch size by two numbers. In my case I have to use stitch size 7. Now knit one row and drop the front bed. Use the yellow tool and make a zigzag latch cast off. I have a video about several different methods for casting off the stitches so you can watch it by clicking on the info card. In that video I'm showing the process up close and I'm explaining in detail. When you take the last stitch, wind the yarn from the lock behind the latch into the hook and pull it through. Now you can bring the needles all the way up and remove the knitted piece of the machine. Don't forget to remove the weight because it can fall and hit you. This is what the dishcloth looks like right after you take it from the machine. You can cut the contrasting color yarn and pull it out. Then you have to hide the cast on and the cast off tails. Finally, you can pin the dishcloth to your ironing board and block it to the correct shape. And this is what the dishcloth looks like. I love this pattern very much. Tell me, do you want to make one for yourself? That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and see you next time.